It's an important day in Illinois. I'm the governor of our state, and uh, I'm using my constitutional authority today to amend a bill that was passed by the General Assembly, House Bill 183. It deals with concealed carry. To explain that to the people of Illinois, it means that there would be an opportunity for uh, citizens to have a loaded weapon concealed on their person in a public place. This particular bill was mandated by the Court of Appeals of the Seventh Circuit on December 11th of last year, three days before the horrific tragedy in Newtown, Connecticut at Sandy Hook School. Our state was told by a federal court that we must adopt a law dealing with concealed carry. I felt that ruling was wrong then. I still feel it's wrong. It's not been appealed. Uh, we therefore have to take action to protect the public safety of the people of Illinois. And that's what I'm doing today. The most important job of a governor is to protect the safety of the people. And I've examined this particular bill over the last several weeks very carefully. And there are serious flaws in this bill that jeopardize public safety of the people of Illinois. And therefore, I've used my power under the Constitution of our state to make important changes, common sense changes, to protect the safety of our people. I'm going to go through those specific changes because I think it's important to enumerate each and every one of those important changes that are needed in order to make sure the people of Illinois are safe. Number one, alcohol. This particular bill would allow someone to bring a gun into a establishment that has a liquor license and is serving alcohol. Guns and alcohol don't mix. Right. Yeah. Right. And I think it's very important that the legislature understand that message from the people of Illinois. And therefore, I took out of the bill any authority for an establishment that serves alcohol to allow guns in its uh, on its premises. Number two, in 1970, the people of Illinois, in a referendum, passed Home Rule. It was a constitutional amendment, uh, a constitutional provision of our Illinois Constitution. It was hard fought. The people voted for it. And Home Rule is a very important part of life in Illinois. It allows local communities to adopt laws and ordinances that benefit their community. And that principle ought to be upheld. Unfortunately, this bill strips from home rule communities all across Illinois their authority to enact future laws on assault weapons, and I think that's the wrong way to go. This provision was inspired by the National Rifle Association. Yes. It has nothing to do with concealed carry. Mm. It's part of their agenda, no doubt about it. But we don't need the NRA telling us how to keep people safe right. in the state of right. Illinois right. in our That's local right. communities. Right. Yep. Under this provision of this law, uh, guns are allowed to be brought into stores, to restaurants, to churches, to children's entertainment venues, to movie theaters, and other private properties. Uh, I think it's very important that the owners of public property, private property, owners of private property uh, be allowed uh, to ban guns from their premises without having to post signs saying no guns allowed. Yeah. The presumption ought to be that no guns are allowed in these places. And if uh, an owner wants to have guns, then they should have to have a sign that says Guns are welcome here. It shouldn't be a burden on private property owners to put a sign otherwise. The number one cause of workplace fatalities in our country are shootings in workplaces. And under this provision of this uh, House Bill 183, employers are not given the ability uh, to properly have a safe and secure work environment. Too often uh, there are situations where guns can 
uh, be brought into the parking lots of workplaces. And uh, we want to make sure with our change that employers are given full authority to prevent employees from carrying guns into the workplace or to the adjoining parking lots. Now, a very important issue, and that has to do with high-capacity ammunition magazines and the number of guns one can conceal on their person. Under this bill, uh, the number of guns that can be concealed on your person is unlimited. It is not limited to one. You can carry multiple guns on your person, and you can have multiple high-capacity ammunition magazines on your person concealed. This is a public safety hazard, and we need to make sure that the people of Illinois come first when it comes to safety. So we have clarified this provision of the law and limited it to one gun and one ammunition clip that holds no more than 10 rounds of ammunition. We've already seen what's happened elsewhere. <laughs> Mental health reporting, which is very, very important to make sure that guns do not fall into the wrong hands. There is a lack of clarity in this bill on the notification process. I've clarified it to make sure that our guns across Illinois do not fall into the hands of those who should never have them in the first place. Finally, another issue has to do with the whole definition of concealed. Under the bill, if you read it, the definition of a concealed firearm includes the phrase mostly concealed, not fully concealed. It allows licensees to walk in public with a portion of their gun exposed. This isn't conceal at all. Uh, therefore, uh, this insufficient provision, uh, which uh, does not properly conceal the weapon, must be clarified. It must be completely concealed. That also uh, deals with the issue of who should have these licenses. Uh, there is a provision in the law that allows law enforcement to challenge someone's right to have a concealed carry license, but the appeal board, which is called the Concealed Carry Licensing Review Board, is entirely exempt from the Open Meetings Act, from the Freedom of Information Act. Uh, that is not right. Uh, right now we have a prisoner review board and an emergency medical services disciplinary board that deal with the very important issues, but the records of those boards are uh, open and public, available to the uh, people of our state. And so I've clarified that as well to make sure there's more transparency with respect to who is getting a concealed carry permit. Finally, our law enforcement every day they take their life in their hands to protect us, our public safety. We want to keep Illinois safe, and we want our public safety officers to be safe. So under the provisions of the bill that arrived on my desk, there is no requirement that someone with a concealed weapon on their person immediately disclose that to a member of law enforcement upon a request. We must require that immediate disclosure. I think this is an example of a situation in Illinois where the legislature passed a bill in a hurried way uh, at the uh, inspiration of the National Rifle Association, mm -hmm. contrary to the safety of the people of Illinois. Right. Fortunately, our Constitution, adopted by the people in a referendum, gives a governor an opportunity to propose important changes that uh, protect the public safety. Our motto is keep Illinois safe. And we have a website, keepillinoissafe.org, uh, that people can visit to see this bill and to see the changes we have proposed for this bill. I think it is important in the coming week that people across our state have the opportunity to look carefully at what the legislature has proposed, what I have changed in this bill to make it safer for the people. We ask the people of Illinois to tell their legislators, uh, please support the common sense changes that I have made in this bill. We don't think alcohol and guns ever mix. No. And I think most people in Illinois, most people agree very right. strongly That's with that right. provision. 
We don't think that those who want to have a concealed weapon on their person need multiple concealed weapons right. with high-capacity ammunition magazines concealed on their person. I think it's time for all of us to come together in the best traditions of democracy and make sure our voice is heard in Springfield by the legislature. This is the amendatory veto of today, and I think over the next week, the people of Illinois need to study our amendatory veto, see these common sense changes. I now want to bring forward someone who has worked on this issue for many, many years, who is with us here today, uh, Colleen Daly from the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Colleen, come on forward. Thank you. My name is Colleen Daly. I'm the executive director of the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence. Let me begin by saying, Governor Quinn, thank you very much for your tremendous leadership on the issue of gun violence prevention. There is no question that the Illinois Council Against Handgun Violence was staunchly opposed to the carrying of concealed loaded handguns in public places for many, many years. And while we were not thrilled with the court's decision, we respected the decision and worked hard this past legislative session to pass the only most comprehensive concealed carry law that will save lives in the country. Unfortunately, that did not happen and a flawed bill was passed. Thankfully, our state's top elected official, Governor Quinn, has our back. We have far too many people in the state. In fact, a thousand people each year in Illinois are killed by guns. Yet we have far too few people willing to take a stand to pass the kind of common sense gun laws we need to save lives. So again, thank you, Governor Quinn, for your leadership from everyone we represent at ICHV. While House Bill 183 had some good provisions included in the bill, we believe it goes too far and the governor's amendatory veto will address many of our concerns. In particular, we are pleased that the governor is removing the arbitrary and quite frankly, ridiculous deadline on communities to pass an assault weapons ban. We are pleased that he shares our position that alcohol and guns simply don't mix. And we're happy that he's requiring businesses to assume that concealed carry is prohibited on their property unless appropriate signage is placed. And lastly, that he is restricting the concealed carry permit holders to carry magazines with 10 rounds of ammunition or less. As the legislature will likely soon hear the governor's veto, it is very important that we think about what has been said. The NRA's argument has been this entire session. Illinois should pass concealed carry because 49 other states have it. Our argument has been, yes, 49 other states do have concealed carry. But if we have to pass one, let's make, we, make sure we learn from their mistakes. We have seen the evidence. We know that putting a CCW permit in the wrong person's hands can only enhance the chances of a deadly incident taking place. Look no further than the fact that since 2007, at least 516 people have been killed by people carrying lawful concealed carry permits. That includes 24 mass shootings and 14 law enforcement officers. We believe that it's a matter of life and death for Illinois citizens who are already too burdened by the toll of gun violence in our communities. We believe that the governor's changes are extremely reasonable and we strongly urge the Illinois General Assembly to accept his amendatory veto. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Colleen. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much, Colleen. I think it is important that the people of Illinois get a vote from the General Assembly on these common sense changes on behalf of public safety. I now want to bring forward Teresa Garate, who has served as the chairperson of our Commission Against Violence. Uh, Teresa lost her father to gun violence. I think it's important that we hear from Teresa. Come on forward, Teresa. Thank you, Governor. Good morning. Buenos dias. It is my honor. Good morning. Um, my honor to be here today and represent the voice of people who have been inflicted by gun violence. This commission was formed by Governor Quinn in 2010. All the commissioners have lost a family member, a son, a daughter, a brother, a spouse, a father, a mother, a sister. So as you think about what's happening today, think about your personal relationships. Think about what it would be to lose somebody. Concealed carry would not have saved any of our loved ones. We vehemently oppose concealed carry to the end, but now we have to have a law in Illinois, and the commission stands behind what the governor's doing today. We wholeheartedly support and commend what he's doing to make this law and ensure that it is designed to, to protect, excuse me, to protect the safety of our residents. It is an emotional commission. It was very hard work. We traveled the state and we heard a lot of testimony. At the end of the day, it's all about protecting our families and our loved ones. 
and we hope that today people will listen to this message all across the state and work with their legislators to make sure that what the governor is proposing becomes the law of the land. Thank you. Right, well said, Teresa. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to listen to law enforcement. Uh, the uh, director of our state police is with us today, a Vietnam veteran, someone who understands public safety better than anybody, and that's Hiram Grau. Come on forward, Hiram. Mm -hmm. Number one, I want to thank Governor Quinn for his common sense uh, changes and for his support of law enforcement. Um, you know, all these recommended changes to legislation have been carefully debated over the last few months uh, to ensure that citizens and police officers are safer. No legislation that has an impact on the safety and security of law-abiding citizens and the public should be rushed without deliberate consideration and a clear understanding of what to expect. We as police officers uh, are responsible for promoting public safety and safeguarding the public. And the Illinois State Police have a duty to enforce the law, not interpret it, but to be clear, we will enforce the law, whatever the law will be. And we applaud Governor Quinn and Illinois lawmakers because they are right to scrutinize every aspect of this important legislation. Far too many innocent lives are taken by gun violence, and all of these recommendations make sense and advocate for public safety. And certainly the definition of concealed carry is clarified here. It's supposed to be concealed. A weapon should be concealed, not partially exposed or partially concealed. And Governor Quinn's actions uh, spell that out. Um, our communities, our visitors and police officers and the public overall will be safer. <clears throat> And again, I'd, I'd like to applaud and thank Governor Quinn for his actions. Okay, thank you, Hiram. Thank you. I think it's important we listen to law enforcement. We have a chief of a suburban police department who is an American hero, inspired us all by his courage, his fortitude, understands firsthand what gun violence is all about. That, uh, he saved the life of a president of the United States. Uh, I think it's very important we listen to his words, and that's Chief Tim McCarthy. Come on forward, Tim. Uh, I can only, after 41 years now in law enforcement, both at the federal and local level, I can only second uh, the comments by Director Grau that these amendments bring common sense into this legislation. If we're going to have concealed carry, keep it concealed. You can imagine the anxiety and stress of people when they see a gun exposed. It happens even with police officers. No alcohol. For any of you who have not been in a bar fight at 2 o'clock in the morning, uh, you don't want to be in one. <laughs> Introducing weapons into that environment is one of the most toxic mixtures that I can imagine. And it happens already. And there's only common sense that weapons and alcohol shouldn't mix. One gun is more than enough concealed properly. We don't need two, three, or four guns on someone. One gun is certainly enough to protect yourself and others. And requiring that that a weapon holder advise the police that they have a weapon will go a long way to prevent confrontations between the police and those who are legally uh, carrying a weapon. Uh, I hope each and every one of these provisions passes. I applaud the governor and everyone here for their contribution uh, to this legislation. And it made a, a, a very tough bill a whole heck of a lot better. Thank you, Governor. Okay, thanks, Tim. Thanks for being here, Tim. You're welcome. Good man. Earlier this year, I was at a church on the south side of Chicago that has been on the forefront of fighting gun violence, who knows firsthand the, the victims who have suffered grievous loss due to gun violence. I think it's important we listen to a leader of all of us who understands that faith is very, very important. And we have to have faith in our democracy that we will be able to get common sense changes in this particular bill. Father Michael Flager, come on forward, Father Mike. Thank you, Governor Quinn. Um, thank you for your boldness. Thank you for your courage. But most of all, thank you for listening to the masses of people in the state of Illinois. These changes are what people in Illinois want. They don't want some select group making the decisions for them. I thank him for his boldness in and continuing to represent the people of the state of Illinois. 
All the things we want to do about violence in Illinois are going to fall short. I don't care how many police, I don't care how many programs, if we don't deal with guns. Right. The proliferation, the easy access, and the lack of responsibility for gun owners. Thank you, Governor Quinn, for taking some responsibility and making owners take responsibility. Allowing alcohol and guns to mix is unacceptable. You're setting up for more disaster and murder. Not allowing home rule is disrespectful to the citizens of this state who deserve that honor of making their own choices. And the number of guns on a person, how ridiculous is it? to tell someone you can carry as many guns as you can fit in your pockets or around your waist. It's absolutely unacceptable. I say to the Illinois legislators, what you did and the bill you have is weak and it's shameful. When an NRA supports your bill, that ought to be signed enough to say it's not a good bill for the state of Illinois or any place in the country. <laughs> lastly, lastly, Connecticut responded strongly when their babies were killed, they respond, responded strongly with some strong legislation. And that's what the governor wants to do, to respond to the babies being killed in Illinois with strong legislation and not some watered down legislation. Please call your representatives now. Tell them support the governor's changes and let's keep Illinois safe. Thank you, Father Mike. I live on the west side of Chicago in Austin neighborhood. I went uh, to a gathering not that long ago uh, that honored the memory of Heaven, who was shot, age seven, shot and killed on the streets of the west side. I think it's important that uh, her pastor, Reverend Ikri, have a word or two to say. Reverend, you want to talk? Sure. Please. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Quinn. Austin leads the city, leads uh, the city in homicides. 500 plus homicides in 2012. We support you 110%. I just left, the reason I'm late this morning, I just left the family of Terrence Graves who was gunned down this morning on the south side. So we support this veto not 110%, 500%, because this represents our lives. This represents our doctors, our future, our lawyers, and we need common sense gun legislation. So we are here to say we will do whatever you want us to do. We will take bus loads to Springfield. We'll march. We'll continue to get petitions like we brought with Father Flager, Flager's leadership, 50,000 petitions to Springfield. We will go all the way with you, and we will make sure that the Illinois State General Assembly will stand up and represent the people like they should. God bless you. Okay, thank you. Very good, Reverend. Okay. Uh, there are no words in the English language, the Spanish language, or any language to relieve the pain of a mother who loses a son, someone that she has known from the day he was born. I think in closing here, we want to bring forward Pam Bosley, who knows firsthand how tragic that situation is and how important it is that we act today on behalf of our children. Pam, take it from there. Okay. First of all, I want to thank the governor on behalf of all of our children, my son Terrell. I stand here today because, and like the governor said, my son Terrell Bosley was shot down in the city of Chicago on April 4, 2006, while coming outside of a church, and somebody shot him and killed him, and today his case is unsolved. So I understand that more guns is not the answer, and we should stand behind the governor with these recommendations because there's so many parents standing here. Can you raise your hands, the parents who lost their children to violence? There's so many parents standing here today because we're behind the governor because we have other children, some of us, and we want to save our other children's lives. He's not asking for something that's, that's not common sense he's asking to save for public safety to save our children we have children traveling to and from the school afraid to go to school afraid to walk to the store so we need common sense laws out here so we stand behind the governor today and we ask that you do the same and we will just like the uh, preacher just said we'll travel to Springfield we there so we got you, Governor. So if you need us, we, well, we already there because we lost our children. So we wake up every single day without our child, 
The pain is horrible. You don't want to be in this situation, so we ask that you stand behind them too, so you won't end up in our shoes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Pam. You're my favorite. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> okay, I'll be glad to answer any questions you might have. This is about public safety. I think that public safety should never be compromised, never be negotiated away. The governor, that's me. My job is to protect public safety, and I think that's what I'm doing here with these common sense mm -hmm. changes. I think we need to repeat that over and over again. The things that I've outlined today that have changed this bill are all about common sense and public safety. And I think the General Assembly and the members should put aside politics and focus on people and their safety. Well, the Constitution of our state actually gives 60 days to the governor once a bill passes. Uh, I passed on May 31st. I think I took a reasonable amount of time to study this bill line by line, to do research on other places in the United States, and to come up with, a, I think, an amendatory veto here that makes common sense, that enhances public safety, doesn't subtract from public safety. The, this bill passed by the General Assembly does not enhance public safety. It endangers and jeopardizes people. Uh, and I think it's important that the governor step in on behalf of all the people uh, to make sure that we straighten it out. And the General Assembly uh, needs to listen to the people of right. Illinois. Right. They want to vote on these changes that I have made. And we'll see uh, whether the General Assembly steps forward and does exactly that. Well, there is a passage in Scripture, if you save one life, you save the whole world. Mm. And I think that's what we're talking about here today. Uh, when you allow for a weapon, a loaded weapon to be concealed on a person, uh, we better make sure that that is done in a proper way. You don't want the wrong people having concealed weapons, people with right. serious uh, mental health challenges. You don't want someone bent on violence uh, having that concealed weapon. You don't want multiple concealed weapons right. that could be used with ammunition clips uh, to kill others. Uh, so dealing with gun violence, I think, has to be done in a proper way that always focuses mm -hmm. on public safety. Everything I've d proposed here today is based on public safety. I think, as I said earlier, uh, the people of Illinois know that alcohol and guns are a toxic mi mixture. And it's important that we uh, stand forward as the people of Illinois to get the legislature to see the reasonable. Well, you heard, okay, you heard earlier about all the incidents of those with concealed carry permits who have committed murders, more than 500 murders, a number, 24 I think it is, mass killings, police officers shot by those with concealed permits that shouldn't have had them. So it's so important uh, that we must, number one, make sure that the standards here are uh, for the public safety, not for the uh, advancement of the National Rifle Association. Exactly. I'm governor of the people of Illinois. Right. My job is to advance their interests, right. the common good. Uh, and those who are listening to the National Rifle Association should listen to the people of Illinois. Right, right, right. That's right. some very nice things to say about your primary opponent, Bill Daly's <laughs> stance on gun control. Does this action today, Bloomberg proof you during the campaign? I have no idea. My job is to be the governor of Illinois. If somebody from another state has an opinion, that's their opinion. 
My job is to fight for the 13 million people of Illinois every day, and that's what I do. And right. I think that's what I've done here today on behalf of folks here and all across Illinois. It's important that we, the people, come together on this uh, important occasion to make sure that our voice is heard by the elected representatives of the General Assembly. And these common sense changes that protect the public safety are adopted into our Illinois law. So that's where I'm coming from. What do you say to the allies in the legislature, allies of yours and all the people who are standing here mm -hmm. with you, who say what we passed was the best we could do to get a law passed? Politics is about compromise. We had to compromise or we get nothing. What do you say to that? Well, I don't believe in compromising public safety. I don't believe in negotiating public safety. Right. And I don't believe that the Good. National Rifle Association is an authority on public safety. Exactly. Go ahead. And, and many of these provisions of this law were inspired by the National Rifle Association right. that sent their lobbyists from Virginia. <laughs> well, we don't need people from that particular part of our country uh, representing the NRA to write the law of Illinois. Our Illinois people uh, want their own law, right, and right. that's what we're talking about with these changes that I've proposed to make sure that we do have common sense public safety when it comes to concealed weapons. Well, there's no question that the action of the federal court compresses everything. I, I don't have the full time that the governor is allotted by the Constitution to consider this bill. The General Assembly took six months, more than six right. months, to uh, pass a bill uh, and so therefore I don't I took uh, maybe 30 days and now it's time for the General Assembly to uh, take a look at the proposed changes I think reasonable changes that make common sense they're all about gun safety and uh, they can act and I think they should act Well, I think you have to take a look at the provisions of this bill. If you think having multiple concealed weapons with high-capacity ammunition magazines concealed on your person is the best way to enhance public safety, most people don't agree with you. You know, I went to the wake. I went to the wake of John Larimer, a United States sailor from our state, from Crystal Lake. I talked to his mother and father. He was shot down in a movie theater in Colorado, in Aurora, at midnight, Aurora, Colorado. Uh, by uh, somebody uh, w brandishing a high-capacity ammunition clip that they uh, brought into that movie theater. Do you want, and I don't think the people of Illinois want, uh, those who come to watch a movie to be uh, uh, loaded right. to the bear with concealed weapons and high-capacity ammunition magazines? Exactly. This bill allows that unless it's changed by this governor. And that's what I did today to protect the people, whether it's a movie theater or whether it's church. When you go to church, mm. do you have to have signs saying no gun Guns allowed. Right. Uh, I think it ought to be presumed right. no guns ought to be brought right. into Absolutely. church. Right. You know, right. churches. Right. Are... Well, you do it right the first time. That's why I did what I did today. This is the way to do it right, right the first time, to prevent bad things from happening. I think the legislature needs to address my proposed changes and to vote on them. I think it's important to have a vote. That's what accountability right. is in a democracy. Uh, those who are uh, mouthpieces for the NRA, uh, they ought to realize that democracy is all Absolutely. about taking a stand, That's either right. for the public safety or against it, and people ought to know where you stand. Exactly. Well, I think that all the legislators, whatever party, whatever house, need to look at the uh, changes that I have made. Uh, mm -hmm. We have a website, mm -hmm. keepillinoissafe.org. 
our legislators can go online and look at the changes and the reasons why. So can everyday citizens. And I think that's what democracy is all about, making sure that the law of our land reflects what the people want. And I think the people in Illinois greatly support what I've proposed today. Absolutely. And what we're going to do over the next week here is make sure that we get the word out through the website and every other way we can uh, to the people and to the legislators to do the right thing. Dr. King once said, it's always the right time to do the right thing. And that's what we want to have happen.